Hello and welcome to another video from Dazatron's Diorama Llama. And so in this monthly make, we're going to look at how to make a two-tier Masters of the Universe stand. So sit back, relax, and hopefully you get some tips on how to make this really simple diorama. So the reason behind this make was to use up some of the offcuts from previous builds and as I've mentioned many times before on this channel I do encourage you to just keep any little bits of styrofoam um, doesn't matter really what size or shape they are they are sure to come in kind of handy for future builds so I had quite a few of these as you can see here and I thought this would be a good opportunity to put them to good use I also hadn't made a diorama based on masters and the universe for quite a while and actually it's one of the most viewed uh, tutorials um, from the past kind of few years um, have been my kind of castle gray school uh, builds so i thought it was high time to kind of look through some eternia pictures and get some inspiration for a new make so after looking at stills from the kind of classic cartoon, I stumbled upon this one here with this kind of staggered kind of brickwork or stonework. And um, I just thought that would be something quite easy, really. And as you know, this channel is aimed at beginners. It's really not meant to be intimidating at all. Um, it's something that should be accessible to everybody who kind of collects toys and just wants to elevate their collection and their display. So as you can see here, I'm just taking some of these off cuts and I'm just kind of cutting them down to a more usable shape, rounding them off, just using a floristry knife or any craft knife that you might have at hand. So you will need a larger piece for the base. And you can see here, I'm using my only tall figure um, from Legends of Dragon Ore, which is by Formo Toys. And although not officially Masters of the Universe, they are kind of a, a Motu style kind of figure. So I've kind of created almost this kind of Mickey Mouse kind of silhouette there. Um, so I can kind of build up these two columns and then have a section at the front there to kind of display one of the pieces. The idea being that the top of these two columns would be another tier where you can display more figures. So because we're using the styrofoam cutter, so this is the electric foam cutter, it is worthwhile using um, some safety equipment as the fumes are highly toxic. And I can't emphasize that enough. Um, do make sure you're in a well-ventilated space and do make sure you've got some sort of protection so you don't inhale those fumes. So I'm just using the foam cutter Again, you could use a saw, you could use a knife, whatever you've got at hand. And after using that foam cutter, just to get the kind of rough cut, I'm now just going back in with the floristry knife. And the floristry knife is really useful because it has a long blade. So if you are going to use a craft knife, again, a long blade um, is particularly useful for this. Mainly because that base there is... I'm trying to think if that was a four inch piece of styrofoam. So it's quite a large piece or quite a thick piece. So you might want to glue, you know, a couple of pieces together um, just to kind of make that base deeper and more solid. And so, yeah, I'm just smoothing that out, just using a hand file there and just adding in a few details. Again, if you've watched any of come my kind of previous makes where i've kind of made um kind of rock dioramas i just tell you to go for it don't worry too much about it don't get too kind of precious over the details um or try and make it kind of photo realistic just cut in some grooves kind of chop bits off um you kind of want that almost kind of angular finish in places and so I'm doing the same kind of thing here with some of these smaller files just to kind of keep, I suppose, that kind of surface decoration consistent throughout the columns. So I'm just adding in a few kind of grooves around the outside. 
don't worry if they kind of meet or join up. I think all of that adds to the illusion. So just to kind of take a little bit of a break from what I'm doing here, it's not very often that I show um, my studio space. And it really is such a, a tight little space. It's not a, a man cave or a room. But these are the, I suppose, the small collection that kind of overlook um, the different tutorials that I make in this little area of my house here. So it's just a little kind of, I suppose it was kind of a cupboard space, which we opened up. And so I've got my stand there, my favourite comic book character, Metamorpho. And then just kind of the few kind of tools and bits that I use. So there's not actually um, a, <laughs> a huge amount of space to actually work here, but it's enough for what I need and I can kind of film what I'm doing in this area. So I just thought you might want to see that. So there's all the off cuts from making all these kind of circular or oval pieces. And as you can see, I've kind of cut up quite a few of those different sizes, um, different diameters. And as you can see, they're not perfectly circular. They're not meant to be. So don't worry about that. But the key thing here is to make sure that they are all kind of flat. So as I glue them together, there's going to be good kind of surface contact. So I've just got a piece of sandpaper here. This one's quite a high gritted kind of sandpaper. And I'm just kind of rubbing that along there just to kind of smooth out the top and the bottom. And I just want to shape the edges of each piece. So I'm just using a smaller piece of sandpaper. This is a lower grit. I think it's a 40, whereas the green one is um, 60, if I remember right. So it's really just the case then of once you've done the one, doing that to a whole of a load of different kind of rocks for your column. So there's plenty there to get on with. Um, it is worthwhile. I mean, I tend to work on a kind of a, it's actually a box lid. I just find it's quite useful to kind of collect all the bits. Um, so I've just put a piece of wood down there just to make sure that when I am smoothing things out, it's got a nice kind of flat surface to work on, whereas the plastic kind of tends to bend a little bit. So again, talking about keeping everything. So you can see this is all the kind of dust um, that you don't want to inhale. But I have put that to one side because if you mix that with some glue, it gives you a really nice kind of soil texture, um, which is really good for the, the kind of bases. So I've, I've sanded all of these down. And as you can see now, because I've kind of cut them and sanded them down, they don't quite fit. So I just needed another piece here, just a small off cut to try and kind of get that level. And I've then also cut a larger piece that would kind of join the two columns. And this would be where your second figure would stand on display. So just a tip here, when you come to the gluing stage, once you've actually got your columns in a position that you find quite pleasing, and I have looked back at the source material to kind of see whether I'm happy with how this looks, it's a good idea to actually draw around um, each piece of the column so that when you kind of take this apart, you know where to place things back to kind of get it looking how you want it. So you can see I've also labelled each column. So on the left-hand side, I've used letters. And then on the right-hand side, I've used numbers just to help me kind of remember the order and where things are. Um, you could just do it off the cuff without planning for this and just kind of see how it works out. But because the glue that I'm going to use later, um, it kind of cures in about five minutes. It doesn't give me a lot of time for kind of thought to kind of think about um, where I want to place these different kind of sections of the column. So planning ahead, I think, in this case is quite useful. So I did add some more of those kind of ring marks to the top of the base. 
and you can see that's kind of consistent throughout the column and i've just used these kind of kebab sticks um or they might be kind of actually corn of the cob kind of sticks just to kind of hold each column in place and they're quite sturdy they're a little bit thicker than a normal kebab stick so it just means it's going to give a little bit of strength you have to really push that down all the way through but it does mean when i glue these in place they're going to be really secure so i'm using the gorilla epoxy resin in fact this is the last of my um the glue that i've got there so i need to pick up some more of that and it just means you have to give it a good kind of mix so you're mixing the two parts of the resin and then that's what kind of creates this kind of chemical reaction and a really strong bond so i'm just using another one of those sticks just to put a good amount of glue on there you could also see i've put arrows on the each part of the column just to show me the direction so i know i'm placing them in the kind of correct position and angle to kind of get it back to how it was before now again you do have to work quickly if you're using epoxy resin you could look for a resin that kind of takes a little longer to cure i'm just a bit impatient hence why i use the five minute one but it doesn't give you a lot of work time so just be aware of that in fact you can use really any type of glue as long as it's styrofoam safe so do just check that on the instructions so I'm just pushing the top of the base there really firmly down because as i've kind of attached each part of the column i found i've got less and less of that kind of um, support in place so i've had to really kind of push that down um, so it holds and it's worthwhile actually just putting something with a little bit of weight on it on top just to leave it kind of stand overnight so just again as a little um, aside to the video um, i do have an instagram channel or i came to should i say where i do show off some other things that i do in my own time this is a ceramic mask that I've been working on recently. So if you're interested in seeing the other things that I do, then do look for Dazatron's Diorama Llama on Instagram also. So back to the make. You can see here this as fully cured. So it's all nice and secure and it's time to paint. So it's always a good idea to just test your paints. Um, you might already have a color that's already mixed that you've purchased that's the right color to use but i'm using cheap acrylics here and they're not a well-known brand they're just something that i've picked up from a cheap kind of art shop or craft store so i just want to make sure that i'm creating the right kind of purple and you don't have to use purple but that was the color from the kind of source material so i just wanted to make sure that I'm kind of creating something similar. When it comes to creating a purple, it can actually be quite difficult depending on the type of red or blue that you use. So I'm just putting out some different types of blue. I think that's a cobalt blue and a phthalo blue is the, the darker one. And then there's a cadmium red, which is the one that's slightly more orange. And then I think it's a crimson for the, the other red there. And so it is just worthwhile just testing different combinations of those colors to get the kind of the finish that you want also by adding a little bit of white it will also change the purple so i've just taken an old kind of jam jar and i've just put a good squeeze of the colors that i want to use so i ended up going for the crimson which is the less kind of orangey kind of red and the fallow blue which is the darker blue adding a little bit of white so i've got a good kind of mix of that color then the problem sometimes if you just make a small kind of batch of color is that you don't have enough for the whole make and then when you want to remix the color it can be quite difficult to match up sometimes so that's why i've just taken that old jar and just mixed up a good batch of the color 
And as you can see there, I've just kind of put that on all over. And now I've just added a little bit more white to the original mixture and used the kind of dry brush effect just to add in some highlights. So really, really easy kind of way to paint the work there. So after it's dried, I'm just checking how it looks with my kind of figures on display. And I'm really, really happy with that. And if you do, if you're a bit unsure of the dry brush technique, then again, do check some of my other tutorials and I'll give you a bit more information about how to use that. And so here with a little bit better lighting, I've just placed the diorama outside and I've got my kind of cartoon version of Beastman there on top and the Legends of Dragon or Own It All there at the bottom. And I'm really, really pleased with how that looks. And it's quite nice to have a display where you can um, place more characters, really, rather than just having a stand for one character. And you could you could turn this into a free tier. You could have even more columns. You could, you know, do what you want. It's, it's your display. So I just thought I'd show you what this looks like on my shelf with a few of the other builds that I've made in the past. So I'm hoping you're feeling inspired by this tutorial. Do have a go yourselves. You won't be disappointed. And um, please like and subscribe and comment. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.